Hi Taurus, welcome to How Love Tarot. This is your July reading for 2021. Now, Taurus, I was trying to give you a money, career and finance reading and no cards were coming out. None. Zero. Now, we both know that whenever I do a money, career and finance reading for you, for the most part, it always turns into a love reading. And Spirit actually stopped me from doing the money, career and finance reading. No cards were flying out for you. Nothing. And so once I, they had me switch over to the love reading for you, cards started to come out. So this is your love reading. For those of you that want a money, career, and finance reading, in the comment, do me a favor. If you can ask me specific questions about either money or career, um, and three or four of you are able to do that um, and be specific, then I'll be able to generate a reading for money and career, but I'm just not getting the energy. So I'm going to need your help in getting that energy if that is something that you really want to uh, hear about. Now, in your recent past in regards to love, getting back to the matter at hand, we have the three of wands in the reverse position for you. We have the four card in the reverse position for you. And we have the page of swords in the reverse position for you. So um, what was happening in your past energy here? Spirit, bring forward the information. Why are these three cards here for Taurus and what do they mean? Why are these three cards here and what do they mean for Taurus in the recent past? So Spirit is saying that you were struggling. Spirit is saying that you were struggling in regards to understanding... Um, you know, there was there was a there was a lot of hopelessness there in regards to future. You could not see your future. You could not imagine your future. It feels as if you wanted to take a leap of faith, but you were unable to. You were scared to take that leap of faith. It feels like the reason that you were scared is because um, uh, that there there was nothing secure. There was there was no safety net. There was nothing. Um, that you felt strong about or that was that was there was a lot of failures is what spirit is saying so there was a lot of failures a lot of disappointment and it began to affect who you think you are emotionally and so there was some work that had to be done there and so um, you were in quite a stuck energy in your recent past in regards to love and um Page of Swords in reverse here, I mean, you know, the thing is with the leap of faith, it shows the desire, the desire to have an open mind and have an open heart and actually, uh, you know, want to meet somebody. But the problem was um, there was conflict within your mind. So you weren't manifesting anything. Uh, you were manifesting non-starters or you were manifesting something that wasn't working. So, um, so you wanted to take a leap of faith, but with the energy, with you feeling hopeless and despair and uh, discouraged by past relationships, um, you weren't able to be brave enough to move forward in the way that you needed to move forward to. So, you know, you were doing one of two things. There were some Tauruses that were completely still and um, not engaging in the way that they should. And there were other Tauruses that were um, unwilling to open themselves up. So you may meet somebody, but some of the fear would start kicking in about disappointments and things like that. So there was really a difficulty in the energy. So there was healing taking place is what Spirit is telling me. And so it's not like they were the wrong people. Um, but maybe for some of you, it was wrong, uh, right person, wrong time, that kind of a thing. So um, that's, what, that's what was going on in your recent past. And in your present energy, we have the Nine of Wands and uh, W-A-N-D-S, for those of you who can't understand my British accent. So here we have the Nine of Wands. And here we have you completely um, letting your guard down and beginning to um, step forward in love in a way that um, you're putting yourself out there again. You're making strides. Um, you realize that the path, I just need to turn this to me, Taurus, so I can feel the energy off of it. So it looks like what, what the... 
you know, there was a lonesome energy about you that you, you needed and wanted to be alone, but didn't. You know, there was such a conflict internally of, um, and there, then there was acceptance. Like there was a part of you that kind of accepted the journey that you were on and you kind of accepted, you know what, well then I'll be alone. But then something shifted in your energy. And um, because the thing is the acceptance of being alone was going off of past history that nothing works out. And because nothing works out, if you look at the back of this card, right, all the, so if you look here, this is like farmland. And if you look there, nothing is growing. So all the seeds, everything that you planted, nothing sprouted into something that was, um, something that you can build upon and sustain upon and uh, continue to gain value from. And you were not, um, and so what was happening is your, the acceptance didn't come from an actual place of healing. The acceptance came from F this, nothing I do works, so what's the point? And so you got fed up. And so there was a bit of this kind of energy, um, mixed energy in all of this. And, and that's part of the healing process because what you were trying to do is understand, well, you know, you can't make love happen. You can't make it go your way. You can't control what the other person does. And so there was a lot of kind of wisdom um, inventory that was that was taking place within your mind. And you were settling into a place of um, healing. But in that healing, there was a lot of rationalizing. Okay. And so, uh, what's happened now something has shifted in your energy uh and um it's kind of like your so you've kind of come to the end of that process uh spirit do me a favor give me one more card to clarify the nine of ones here um what i'm picking up can you can you clarify it for me give me energy present energy what happened to make taurus change their mind and come out of the energy whoa oh <laughs> the wheel of fortune i know sometimes taurus you gotta wait for stuff to just happen i mean whether you believe this stuff or not taurus um there is divine timing and um i don't know if i've told you this story before but but there is divine timing it seems extraordinary if you kind of don't have a spiritual background or religious background or you don't follow any type of faith or anything but think about this Think about your best friend and think about the fact about when you met them, right? So let's say you've had a best friend since you were three years old or a best friend since you were 10 years old or a best friend since you were um, 13 years old, right? You've met them in childhood and today they are still your best friend. 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years later, they're still your best friend. Guess what happens? If that, or if that person, your best friend, or you were not born exactly when you were born, you would not have ended up in the same school or wherever you met. You may not have ended up in the same neighborhood. If you met at school, you may not have been in the same classes. You, you know, if they were born six months earlier than you, they may have ended up in a different year than you. So you would, yeah, your paths would cross. You would see each other maybe in school. I'll give the example of school here. And then you would never um, really interact, right? So the six months makes a difference. And one of the things that happens that people don't realize in regards to miscarriages is miscarriages occur because this is one of the reasons, this is not all the reasons, but on a spiritual level, this is what's happening sometimes with miscarriages. A soul is coming in to be with um, another soul and be in a, let's say, friendship with them. And in order for those two souls to meet, they, they have to meet at a certain point at the same time. If that doesn't occur, then their soul plans off. The, the, the plan of each soul is off and uh, they're coming in to be with each other for whatever reason. There's all kinds of reasons for that. But I'm just talking about best friends here, right? So just think about that analogy. Think about the fact that you are born at a certain time because certain people need to come into your life at a certain time. 
And if you, you know, it's kind of like waiting for a bus, you know, you're waiting for the number 59 bus that's meant to come in at 702 and um, somebody stops you at work and gets chatting. And so you don't get to the bus stop until 703. The bus didn't wait for you. The bus is already gone. And so you now have to wait for the next bus. And so that's what this is like. So what I tell you all of this, Taurus, because the Wheel of Fortune and what came out was um, the reason why your guard is down is because divine timing. So Wheel of Fortune represents all kinds of things. I'm picking it up psychically from the spirit world. And what this shows is many things. It shows that um, it's now time for a new cycle in your life, but it has to do with divine timing. It has to do with um, you being where you are and whoever is coming into your life, them being where they are. And you would be surprised that even if you are a day off, one day off, you cannot meet the person you're supposed to be with and um, or going to come into your life. So I see here there's some divine timing going on in regards to your situation and your present energy. And so your guard has come down because, um, you know, astrologically within your soul's plan, a part of it is unconscious the 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 um your soul knows how much time it needs to heal and it can recognize when the energy of the other person is coming in so the guard has to drop right because if the guard remains up in the physical world you will miss the person that's supposed to be coming into your life you won't be open to it so I know this sounds really weird. I'm sorry, Taurus. I always go off on these bloody tangents with you. But um, this is what's happening. There's this, there's this moment in time that if it doesn't occur, and Spirit is bringing back an old reading of, um, it's your yearly reading. I don't have those posted, uh, Taurus. I do not have those um, readings posted anymore for your yearly 2021 reading. But they're bringing back a, a reading for your 2021 um, where they talk about the movie Serendipity. And um, it's an old movie by John Cusack. And um, like if you're not in the right place at the right time, you just keep missing each other. And another movie that shows this really, really well is Sliding Doors with Gwyneth Paltrow. But either way, that's what's occurring in your life. Something quite magical is occurring in your life right now, in your love life, for the right person to come in. And so that is your present energy. Your strength is the King of Wands. Look at you, Taurus, King of Wands. Look at you and your passionate energy. So you're coming back into that passionate energy. Your mind, your heart, your body, your soul is opening up to another human being. You have been very, very shut down on a very mental level, uh, Taurus. And, and um, when we shut down our minds mentally because of whatever has happened in our lives that we're healing from... We can't force it open. It is just something, you know, um, we have to go through our own process. Some people go through therapy. Some people meditate. Some people go to church. Some people talk to family members. Some people do all of the above. Um, some people, um, if you numb, right? So if you numb that, that pain through alcohol or drugs or addictions, you're going to slow down the process. Will you get there? Most of you will get there, and I say this as a psychologist, um, your soul's plan is your soul's plan. So if you have to get there through difficulty, you'll still get there, but uh, it's how easy do you make the path for yourself. But you're back in your juju, J-U-J-U. -U. You're back in your energy, you're back in your body, you're, you're out of the, um, you're, you're back in your passion. There's a lot of passion around you, in you, through you. Um, and you're, for those of you that have not met somebody yet, you are poised, um, you're, you're, want, you're wanting it now. You didn't want it before. Taurus, man, you're stubborn. So when you don't, and I wonder if you know this about yourself. You probably do because you've been living with yourself your whole life. But I don't know this about you, so indulge me. But your, um, what your energy shows me here is when because you are so stubborn 
I don't think you realize how stubborn you are. You're very black and white in your energy. So you live in extremes. You're one extreme or the other. You're either shut down or you're completely open. And when you're shut down, you're shut down for business. And um, I'm not sure for the younger Tauruses if you're aware that you're shutting down. I think on some level, you think you're partly shutting down. But the way the energy comes out because you're Taurus, because you're such a grounding energy and a grounding force for people around you, they can feel you shut down completely. And if people can feel you shut down completely, you're not going to attract um, or you're going to repel love. You're going to repel anybody coming into your life because you are not open. You're like going, you know, like it's like, you know, you're, you're Jones in for a chocolate. Not that I am Taurus, but apparently this is a, <laughs> I am, I could kill a Cadbury's cream egg right now. But, um, but it's like going to the store and uh, the shop closes at seven o'clock and you're jonesing for that chocolate and it's again, 7.03 and it says closed. And that's how you are, right? That's like, you know, me going into uh, the little corner shop to get my Cadbury's cream egg, which is you, and you're shut down for business. And it's like, I can't get in, right? Until you open up. I mean, I can break in, but then you'll probably, um, not like that but anyway that's the analogy so people can read that energy off of you so you may feel that you're you're hiding that but you actually don't because you're such a grounding force to people around you so you're back in your juju you're back j-u-j-u you're back in your your body you're back in that passionate energy you're back in the um uh the desire to um go about your business and get back to business in regards to your love life. Good for you, Taurus. Look at you. You've got it going on. And uh, we've got the Nine of Swords in reverse. And uh, this is your challenge, by the way. And we have the Five of Swords in the upright position. So Nine of Swords um, is, you've been, and again, I kind of already said this, there's been a lot of healing that's been going on. And um, again, just really trying to understand the people uh, and situations that have caused you a lot of hurt and pain through your past. And you went through, you know, kind of like a, a period of just really dwelling in that energy and trying to understand the meaning of life and trying to understand your meaning in life and trying to understand where do you fit into all of this and how do you want to move forward within your life. And so um, because of all the loss in your life, and the profound effect that it had on your self-esteem and on your who you are as a person, it shifted your consciousness. So the the challenge is if you as is you kind of um, you've your meta um, there's a metamorphosis that's going on in regards to your energy. And so uh, what we have here in the Five of Swords energy, so this is the what you were feeling before, but in the Five of Swords energy, um, there's a little bit of a rebound effect, kind of like a rubber band or elastic band where you pull it and then it, you know, you flick it and it goes back to its normal size. So there's a little bit of worry going on and that's your challenge. Taurus, that pitter patter in the background is my little dog who is walking around, doing the rounds. Hopefully doesn't start barking. This is the outcome for you and uh, incredible outcome. We have the tower card. Spirit, bring through the meaning that you gave me when I pulled the card. Change, change, everything's gonna change. Tauruses, everything is gonna change. So um, wherever you are on the spectrum, whether you be single, you're at the beginning of the relationship, you're in the middle of the relationship, you're, you're deep into the relationship. Um, a tower moment for the positive is happening in your life. And what it means is change is about to happen in your life. So uh, for those of you that want a relationship and know who you want, go get them is what I say, because you have the power to do it. You're no longer afraid of the change that's about to occur. You're no longer um, apprehensive and fearful and um, out of your power with it. You can handle anything that comes your way. So it feels like you're going to be leveling up 
for those of you in a relationship, wherever you are on the spectrum, whether it be in the beginning, middle, um, you've been together for a long time. It, it, now, let me talk about something here. There is a small minority, very, 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 very small minority of you where uh, Spirit just showed me, for those of you that have been together for a long time and are watching this reading, the reason why you're watching it is because you want a change in your relationship. And for some of you, with the Tower card here, I don't feel anything negative, but it feels like you are considering kind of leaving that relationship. I'm not telling you to do it, but it's the process that you're in. And that's for those of you that have been together with somebody for like 25 years or something. And and um, you've kind of gone in separate directions and you're contemplating some of this. I'm not giving you any advice. I'm not telling you to leave your relationship. For those of you that are watching this because of that, do what you feel is right. But the tower moment comes and for most of you, it's a really great tower moment. In your outcome energy, a ton of cards came out. So I want to start with the um, queen, uh, actually the king of uh, cups right here. Absolutely uh, incredible energy. And this is the overarching energy for your reading, which is, and I'm going to read this out to you. Trustworthy, honorable, devoted, cautious. Someone you can completely trust. A situation that is safe. A solid romantic relationship hidden but well-intentioned emotions, a charitable benefactor, seeing a counsellor. And I feel like all of this is what's going on. It kind of summarizes every, every word in this oracle card or slash tarot card of the King of Cups is representative of the overarching energy of the month of July. If you are, have your eye on somebody or if you have, uh, if you're with somebody, you've just gotten with somebody or you're with, you know, you're developing a relationship with somebody, this person is trustworthy, honorable, devoted, and cautious. You are trustworthy, honorable, devoted, and cautious. You're singing out of the same hymn sheet, Taurus. It's a beautiful thing. Someone you can completely trust. You can trust this person. You can trust this person and they can trust you. A situation that is safe. And this is the big part of it, a situation that is safe. For so long, you've been overgiving Taurus in your relationships. You've been expending your energy and, um, and you're the one creating the safe environment for the other person. And what's, what's not happened is you have not some, had somebody come into your life who is reciprocating building a safety net with you. You're building the bloody safety net by yourself and uh, so it collapses, right? So here the situation, a situation that is safe means that both people are contributing to the safety and the building of the safety of the relationship, meaning that you're devoted, you're loyal, you, you are... Um, you see each other for who each other really are. You accept all the flaws. You um, support each other. You for, um, And suddenly Spirit said you're falling in love, right? So safety for you can only happen when you... Um, uh, falling in love can only happen at this point for many Tauruses that I'm talking to where you, where you feel safe. And I feel like there is... Uh, some of you are falling in love here. A solid romantic relationship. Couldn't have said it better myself. So whether you have your eye on somebody or whether you are, um, uh, somebody just came up, Spirit World just said something. Um, for those of you that have your eye on somebody, you need to act quickly because if this person is like you, trustworthy, honorable, devoted, cautious, someone you can completely trust, a situation that is safe, that person is going to be of high value. That person is going to be wanted by other people. And so if you do not act on it, you're going to lose them. And it doesn't mean somebody else is not going to come along. It's not just... But I see that here. I see you losing them right here. I see you not acting and kind of holding all of this information in 
and not you know you're holding your cup of love there you're you're like two ships passing in the night and you're not acknowledging um them you're not beckoning them towards you so there's a timeline here for those of you that can understand you know i'm gonna have to watch that movie spirit is bringing back your reading again in that movie serendipity i, I don't remember movies taurus at all um i don't remember anything that i watch uh i'm gonna have to watch it but um <laughs> what if it's about something completely different i look like an idiot and when you go watch it well i'm used to that taurus I'm making an idiot of myself but they they're showing here that um then they keep talking about serendipity here the movie so hidden but well-intentioned emotions so some of you are going to end up kind of um those that, that are single that don't act upon your feelings for somebody that is in your you know kind of atmosphere here um, that you've been harboring feelings for um, if you don't act on it this person will go off with somebody else but again it doesn't mean somebody else won't come in but spirit well keeps talking about the movie serendipity so i think we know what we're doing this weekend taurus we're gonna have to watch that movie um and then we have charitable benefactor um it feels here charitable benefactor feels like you it feels like you're um in a situation with this person or the person you're attracted to or your person that you're in a relationship with that you are um willingly helping them and willingly supporting them so that's what that means and here we have seeing a counselor so uh that's literal um in that some of you could be seeing a counselor some of you could be getting help some of you could be talking about your emotions and feelings because taurus you, whether you be male or female you have a tendency to really hold in your feelings not really express them and um the counselor in this card represents people around you that you feel safe to talk to so they don't necessarily have to be a therapist um, it, it could be a friend, it could be uh, many friends, it could be family, but you take wise counsel. And that's the overarching energy for the outcome for, for July. And real quick, we have here, uh, here and now. And that's what I was talking about with that, again, that keeps coming back divine timing the serendipity here we have being blessed right and here we have the egg being cracked and so you know a bird does not come out of an egg until it is proper properly um ready to be born but properly what do you call a bird that uh a baby bird that comes out of, are they born i don't know anyway um i think there's a word for it but uh we have that here is the here and now that divine timing oh uh, here we have the past and the future it's kind of like you know act now act now this is a blessed union here we have uh 22 which in um, numerology represents four which represents stability so there is a strong stability in this union there is um it, now is the time for you to act uh, whether that be letting your person know how you feel, um, that's what spirit is saying. Let your person know how they, how you feel. Express your emotions. Don't hold back with fear. Spirit says time is promised to no man. If you feel what you feel, say it today. I feel like they tell you that all the time, Taurus. And here we have. Um, do they have the? Have you brought it up in a reading before, Spirit? They say yeah brought up in a reading before so here we have by the book and so for those of you that are um have somebody uh this is going to you, you, you're going to connect it looks like you're going to take it to the next level with this person it looks like you're going to become a family with this person you're going to join forces with them uh and here beautiful again we have the number 11 the number 11 is an angel number it represents everything Hey, um, talking to you, Taurus, about these things, I feel like, uh, like I'm Ronald McDonald talking about astrology. I mean, you're not taking me seriously. I don't even feel serious when I'm talking to you about this stuff. <laughs> but I'm just gonna say it anyway. So two, 
you know, the number 11 is an angelic number. And when you keep seeing it on the time, like on your microwave or whatever, you'll see 11, 11, and you'll see it continuously all the time. And that represents that, um, that you're on your soul's path, that your, the, your path is unfolding as it was meant to. It's kind of like deja vu. Deja vu and 11-11 are the same thing. It is a confirmation that you are where you're supposed to be. Even though you may have come out of a lot of struggle, you may be feeling a little bit lonely right now, all of those things are okay because you're on the right path. You're gonna be connecting here with um, joining forces with somebody by the book, by the book spirit. What does that mean, by the book? You're very traditional. You're very traditional, Taurus. So you, you know, you are the kind of person that is has integrity, has loyalty, has devotion by the book, right? These are how relationships are meant to be. They're not meant to be one night stands and friends with benefits and situationships and um, intolerance and uh, demanding or overbearing or. Uh, manipulative or um, you know they're supposed to be a safe a safe place and the only way that that can happen is when everybody in that situation operates with integrity by the book right you follow the rules and the rules of a relationship if you're coming together in an intimate relationship it means it's sacred space whether you be married or not the, the, the more you get into that relationship, the more of a sacred space it becomes because you're sharing your bodies. And when you share your bodies, it is the greatest, you know, your body houses your soul. Well, it doesn't house your soul, it houses the breath of the soul. And so the first thing that you do when you come into life is take a breath. And the very last thing that you do when you leave life is take a breath. And everything that you do in between is breathe, right? Every second of every day, you're breathing. And so when you are, um, the body is a temple, the body is a temple. And when you abuse it through drugs, alcohol, sex, you ignore it, you, you allow it to, um, uh, to just be abused by you, right? Because no one can abuse it but you. Now I'm not talking about the other kind of abuse, forget that, leave that aside. Um, that's a special kind of hell for those people that perpetrate. But um, what I'm talking about is your body. Your body is a temple, right? And so it houses the breath, it houses your life. Without the breath, there is no life. That's why when you come together with somebody sexually, you bond with them. And that's why um, it's, you know, the women bond more than men because they are the ones that carry the baby. I don't know why spirit is making me talk about all this stuff, but so anytime that there is a sexual interaction, uh, but, and I'm just talking about man or woman right now, um, forgive me those LGBTQU community, I'm just kind of talking about man and woman right now and apply it to your own situation also. But when a man and a woman come together, um, they're coming together to build and to create, right? And, it, and also for the LGBTQ community as well. And because the bodies are our temples, there are churches, or there, there are temples, right? And so when you desecrate them with drugs, alcohol, food, those kinds of things, you're not exercising, you're not getting your sleep, you're misusing your body. That's like going into a temple and throwing paint everywhere and and you know, pulling up the pews and, and smashing the stained glass windows, that's what you're doing to your body. But, but when, you know, and that's why it's so important when you bring bodies together, um, the energy starts to form because it is sacred space. It is the breath that creates life. And so um, you're joining together here and it's gonna be a very, very strong union. It's gonna be a very, very strong union. So, and here we have regeneration, um, and we have the number 46, which in numerology uh, represents 10. Taurus, I am glad to say you're at the end of a cycle. We have regeneration. 10 represents the end of a cycle. Um, a cycle is ending in your life, and a new one is beginning. For those of you that do nothing, nothing will happen. 
For those of you that take action, you are, um, be fearless, you know, with your heart, be fearless, say how you feel, um, mean what you say, and don't worry about the outcome, don't worry about whether the person feels the same way, don't walk through your life um, in mental energy, uh, not putting yourself forward because you think the person is not there yet or that you're going to scare them away or they're going to think you're a freak or whatever it is. Do you see how I said freak, Taurus? I don't think you're a freak. Um, but, you know, I think these are the kind of thoughts that you have in your head that somebody will not accept you because you announce or, or you know, you know what's happened is you've done that, Taurus Spirit is telling me, you've done that throughout your lifespan where you have been open and honest about how you feel and and the person that you're telling that to has um, not been loyal to you and been has, has dishonored your emotions and your feelings and they've trashed them. And so there's a holding back of those emotions now as if that can somehow stop you from feeling what you're feeling. Just because somebody else misused and desecrated your words, it doesn't mean that the next person will. But you should never die with your music left inside of you. If you have something to say, say it. And uh, if you, you know, even if, um, even if it means that um, it's going to sound crazy and you know there's so many youtube videos out now on dating and how you're supposed to date and how you're supposed to approach a woman or how you're supposed to approach a man and what you should do and what this means and what that means let me tell you something when there's love involved all of that you should i was going to say something else there all of the coaching online is rubbish rubbish love is love Okay, it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what anybody says that are the experts. Love is from, love is the most powerful force in the universe. And so you should not be using your head to decide on an action of love. When you love somebody, you say it. You say it. And um, because again, you will, you don't know if you're going to be here tomorrow, Taurus. You don't know. You don't know. So at least the very last thing that you said to your person, even whether they could accept it or not, or whether they could hear it or not, or whether they can understand it or not, are the three most beautiful words in, in the human language, which is I love you. So say it. All right, Taurus, that's your reading. Um, be brave, be you, and everything's going to work out just fine.